our affirming comment today. Um, like you said, it kind of jumps off of our last quick hit. Mm-hmm. Um, that being power and abuse of power, um, and how as young Black African people of the diaspora, yeah, um, our our viewpoint on that topic. Yeah, power is power is a lot. Power is everything. So, yeah. and I think power affects a lot of issues we have in a lot yeah. of facets of society mm-hmm. and life is related to power. Yeah. And we kind of already kind of started down the path of like political power. Mm-hmm. So I think we might as well start off there. Okay. On the power of politics, the power that like how that whole plays a role yeah. in everything. Um, I think actually to to tie it more into the um the whole um, mass shooting, I guess, epidemic that we're in the middle of right now. Mm -hmm. I think typically when you think of abuse of power, you think of like the overuse of it, the egregious use of it, you know, things of the sort. But I think in the case of um, mass shooting, it's, it's like the lack of use or the... An ability to get things rolling as they should. Well, I understand where you're trying to go. Yeah. I think that I would just throw in it's the lack of use or the misuse or inability, whatever, Mm -hmm. from the side that you want Mm -hmm. to make the change that you want. Yeah. Right? Because the reason that the change that a lot of people are yelling for hasn't occurred in a widespread way is because there is another powerful entity that apparently is more powerful because they're able to get what they want. And they're able to keep the status quo for the most part. Right, right, right. I think it's like the opposing viewpoints just keeps us at a standstill. But Mm -hmm. I think um, there would be utility in compromise. And if both sides could start compromising and coming up with ways where they can get what they want, but not all of what they want. Right. And I think, yeah, the, the neglect of doing that is the issue here. It's like you're so powerful that you're like standing your ground you're digging your boots in the or your heels in the ground and and then you're not moving at all right and that's that's just a misuse or a lack of use of your power that is true yeah it's you know do you get what i'm saying yeah no no i mean power is you don't have power to keep it and to say i'm going to never let anyone else have it yeah i think like the real power is an ability to give Mm -hmm. a little bit right to like to give ground and say you know what i'm so powerful that i don't mind if you do like you know like Like, of course that's like a it's not a one-to-one relationship to what we're talking about politics mm -hmm, wise mm -hmm. but essentially that's what people want and expect is that you have power but you don't smother all the power and say no one else can get it but yeah i mean going back to what i said with like the more traditional um idea that there's abuse of power all over the place Mm -hmm. i think typically you hear of it in um lesser like not as wealthy countries like uh-huh. you know and in, in africa countries. developing that's the word i was looking yeah, for yeah. in less developed areas uh-huh. um but it's interesting to see that the same thing occurs in oh, of what you know to be like the wealthiest or the most it occurs everywhere it's, it's funny because we especially as africans we think of it as like there's none of it here mm-hmm. and all of it is there yeah but then it's like no there's just different degrees yeah and there's different checks on that power right. that lets it to right. like the problem with africa or a lot of developing countries is a lot of that power is unchecked yeah so literally if the president decides that he's going to be president again you can't do anything like right. it just happens right. whereas here if trump was to be like oh i want a third term well he hasn't got the second one yeah. but let's say he <laughs> wants a third term yeah then it's gonna, There's like, no, gonna like, be a you check can't, on he that. can't even say it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because the check is so permanent and so powerful. It's like, mm-hmm. you don't even get to say that. But even when it comes to government, like, um, in, let's just use Africa mm-hmm. as the jump off point, what we typically know to occur is like bribery. But then mm-hmm. you can say the same occurs here, but Definitely. in the form of like lobbying mm-hmm. or like, just like more sugar coated yeah. forms of bribery. So it's like nowhere is immune to it. Of course. And um, even, and even talking about bribery, um bribery occurs here is just that eventually you're gonna be caught and it's like you're gonna come you're gonna pay for it yeah like uh, a good story about it i listened to this one podcast Mm -hmm. i can't remember what it's called Mm -hmm. but it's about detroit i don't know if you heard you've probably heard about it like in the early 2000s uh what's his name kwame something he was like the mayor of detroit yep and he was deep into bribery like if you wanted a contract in the city 
He has to go talk to his dad, yeah. who was a consultant, yeah. and then they would give you the contract, and like, you have to pay them money on the side. Well, he went to jail for that. Or even like with Baltimore, you know how that one woman who oh, had yeah, books yeah, that she that. was like somehow she was selling her books basically mm-hmm. and getting making money off of it through her political appointment. Yep. Um, if you want to know the details of that, go read up on it. But yeah. again, similar fashion where you're utilizing your power mm-hmm. um, to gain something personally. Yeah. But even outside of all of that, like with what's happening in Puerto Rico right now, like what's known to be more traditional abuses of power and like the more like perverse abuses yeah. of powers are occurring in Puerto Rico, which is technically part of the U.S. Like it is a U.S. territory. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's also unfortunate to see that such egregious forms of like abusing yeah. power is occurring right beneath our noses and what we consider to be like the more mm-hmm. you know developed areas. Yeah, no, the definitely. World. I think the whole Puerto Rico thing was kind of crazy, mm-hmm. but ends up kind of been a partially hopeful story because they yeah. did like the dude ends up being kicked out yeah i think he's a governor is his yeah. official title yeah he's, he's not there anymore um but you kind of brought up puerto rico and like a larger thing i was thinking about yeah. and i don't know if you can answer this yeah, but sure. i'm gonna ask you okay is how is puerto rico not a colony i don't actually know. do you mean a state is no that what you mean by no i mean colony like what makes them different than a colony like when Nigeria was colonized by the oh, British, oh, how is Puerto Rico not currently colonized by no, the United I, States? It pretty much is. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean that's what I think. Yeah, no, but no, I'm trying it to is. ask other people to see like, it's am like I crazy? A form of like imperialism. Like, yes, yeah. we all know. Like, for instance, the U.S. was a colony of Great Britain at one mm-hmm. point. Same, same vein. It's just we're it, we're in the 21st century, so we don't necessarily use the same terms. Well, like I don't. It just seems crazy to me because it's like, how is that still going on? But I think Puerto Rico does reap some benefits, though. I mean, of course, you always you always get US. benefits, but from from some of the stuff that I read or listened to mm-hmm. about the whole Puerto Rico mm-hmm. thing, a lot of the uprising was yes, we want the governor out, but we also just want to run ourselves because yeah. we're not we're not a state, like you said, right? Like you kind of alluded to. It's they're like they're like in a gray area. They yeah. they don't get everything. But the thing is, the major thing about Puerto Rico is that they are in financial turmoil, so mm-hmm. they do kind of need the help of the U.S. But the U.S. is trying to not give them help anyway. Like Trump, I get, is not what, trying to I help get them. what you mean. I get what you mean. But like in the case of like, and and again, I totally understand. But so before mm-hmm. I say this, don't attack me. I but I um, but like in the case of the hurricane that occurred. Mm-hmm. You know, say what you want to say about the U.S. and how they handled it. I will say they handled it poorly, but who's to say they would have handled it better if they were left to their own devices? Because again, they don't have the financial. No, I definitely understand what you're saying, but I think that the the greater thing that maybe you're kind of missing a little bit because we're on a specific place is that. This is the mindset of colonialism, yeah, I right? See what you mean. It's the yeah, mindset yeah. of like, oh, I'm these people as the can't. white man. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Like you don't want to, but yep. you kind of are. It's like yep. they yep. can't do it themselves. Yeah, we have to you're do right. It for you're them. right. And how know. how will they ever do it by themselves exactly. if they don't have the chance? And yeah, exactly. it's like then I could be using the same things for how Nigeria is in a much, I guess, quote unquote, worse spot than they were when mm-hmm. they were under the British, but they're yeah. also only fifty years old. So let's give them another hundred and fifty exactly. years or like however many years Great Britain has had to then say that. You know what I'm saying? It's like definitely. they they're definitely at a different spot. So you're totally right in calling me out on that bullshit. <laughs> but yeah. but it is, yeah, it's 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 a modern colony. Yeah, no it is. It is. And it's just it was just reading everything that was going on with it. It was just crazy to me. I was like, how is this going on? Like yeah. how because they're like they have a governor but the governor is not even powerful because, I mean, yeah. he has some power, but like, it's only there's, so much. there's a board of, I don't know what they're called. Yeah. But basically, the US government appoints people that tells them, like, what to you do. run that place over yeah. there. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> they're a whole colony. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's so weird. Know what and it's, it's so appointed. Weird. It's not even voted for. So it's not like, you can't even say, like, oh, they're kind of a, like, they're not yeah. a state. Because yeah. they don't get to vote yeah. for those people. Those yeah. people get appointed, I believe, by the president. But I could be wrong. Or to go to the other side of the world, it's kind of like Hong Kong to China. It's yeah. Very similar. Oh, thing the Chinese like... place, they just confuse me. There's so, <laughs> so much confusion. But again, so same thing confusion. where there's abuse of power to some fashion. Mm-hmm. But what I do like about areas like this, where they are in that gray area, they're like, I'm not going to just sit here and rest on my laurels and just expect for you guys to do what you will. Like, I want my voice to be heard to some fashion, even though it is limited. It's not to the same as somebody who has free reign. But, Mm -hmm. like, in the case of Hong Kong or Puerto Rico, it's like, 
what I can say, I will say. I won't just allow China or the U.S. to dictate how we handle this situation. Yeah. Uh, because I have a little bit of power, I'm going to use it. So I guess in that case, it's a good use of power of the citizens of these gray area yeah. territories. No, 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 definitely. Um, I think whenever... It kind of reminds me of like the, the Tupac quote where he's like, there's a bunch of hungry kids and mm-hmm. like they're begging for food mm-hmm. and eventually they knock on the door. But if you don't open the door, eventually like they're going to pick the lock. Like yeah. they're going to get yeah, in. Yeah. So I think that's what we're seeing is like, okay, we don't like this governor. We're going to fix the governor. Next time they don't have a good governor, like it's yeah. going to go higher. Yeah. Like that's how everyone fights for the independent. Exactly. So it's just crazy to me that we're kind of watching it happen in real time. Mm-hmm. Like what happened like in a lot of African countries mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. decades mm-hmm. ago. And it's like, wow. Yeah, we're here to how witness can we it right just now. Be, like, how is this just happening? Yeah. Just happening. Uh, and I'm also not very well versed on, like, uh, Hawaii, for instance. Well, Hawaii's wonder, a state. I know it's a state. But, for instance, I wonder if at one point, because I don't I have no idea. Okay, I Was it at one point a territory and then eventually it got dissolved into Maybe, a that's state? Possible. And is that what's going to happen to Puerto Rico? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just question that. Um, I, I would think that if that was a path, that it would be something that... Puerto Rico themselves might want, Mm -hmm. but I think that the U.S., especially right now in this climate, Mm -hmm. would not want. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that, like, because I don't know how it would happen, but I feel like uh, like the Republicans are not going to be like, oh, yeah, like, like, Trump was basically trying to be like, why are we helping these people? Like, he was like, he basically was asking the question (laughs) we're asking, but he was asking from the perspective of, like... No, I do think they want to keep it at arm's length. Yeah, he was asking from the perspective of, like... Why? <laughs> Why yeah. do we have to help yeah. them? Yeah. Like, who are they to us? And everything comes down to money. And like I said, they are in like financial distress. Mm-hmm. So if you were to bring them in fully as a full fledged state, I think the responsibility of taking care of that distress is added on to what U.S. is already going through. So yeah. I think that's part of it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, power isn't only in politics. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. Another, another really major thing that kind of went on. Kind of around the time the Puerto Rico thing was going on, maybe a little earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a Nigerian artist who goes by Timmy Dakolo. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of any of his songs. I just know his name. So he yeah. must have a couple good songs. Mm-hmm. But his wife um, came out in an interview and basically said that she was sexually assaulted by, oh my God, I can't remember his name. Pastor Fato Yimbo or something like that. Mary? I probably said it wrong, but something like that. His That's famous pastor, I can't remember his church. He has a really big church Koza. following. Koza. Koza. Thank you very much. Koza. His name was church. Yeah. Like, they're huge. One of the big churches. Yeah. And he's like the pastor. And basically was like, yeah, he sexually assaulted her years ago. Like mm-hmm. a long time ago when she was like a teenager, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lo- there was like a lot of shouting and uprising yeah. about yeah. that. Um, did you hear about that? For sure. I did hear about it. It happened during our off season, our mm-hmm, hiatus mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think to me, it just goes to show how there's an abuse of power when it comes to female male d- dynamics mm-hmm. um, all the time. I mean, we've talked about this, I feel, um, on various episodes and yeah. just like how the patriarchal lives um, to like a patriarchal society lives to breed men yeah. that a lot of times do abuse the power that's been bestowed upon them from years of allowing such behavior. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Do you think... Do you think so? So thing, It but. is unfortunate, and I think there's, like, so many different angles to look at it, yeah. especially from a power dynamic standpoint. Yeah. Um, you kind of hit on one, the male and female one. Yeah. But I think I want to kind of talk more about the religious figure mm. and follower one. You're right. That's right? Because I think, like, that's a... Much. Yeah. No, like, that happens so much. Like, yeah. I don't... There's yeah. a bunch of reasons people say, oh, they're repressed and yeah. this, but it just, to me, it seems like it comes down to power. Yeah. Like, one has power, one doesn't have power because they point. see that power to yeah. them. And yeah. they then become powerless in that situation. You're so very right. I mean, we I, I do know we talked about it to a, a certain extent when we talked about, like, the Catholic Church and that whole situation mm-hmm. and how, like, it's a thing that will always occur. Yeah, when they um, finally if, decided to acknowledge yeah. that a lot of this was going on. Exactly. But, yeah, it's a thing that will always occur if, like, there is a sect of people that are seen to be, like, above, you know, above, like, deity adjacent mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so i'm like they can almost do no wrong mm-hmm. within the confines of the oppressor oppressee and also at large like within that confine you're like looking at this person as like i mean they're you know yeah they're untouchable well, well, why, why do you think that is like what because to me but that's what i'm saying like because they're deity adjacent okay it's almost like so whatever they're doing faith. yeah it goes with your faith and whatever you're, they're doing it's almost like they're allowed to because 
they know best. Like, mm-hmm. God has touched them in some ordained fashion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then those around them, too, like, bringing in the dynamics of male-female mm-hmm. oppression are going to have that compounded on top of the fact that, again, this person is seen as a religious leader. Not just a leader in our society or in yeah. our community, but a religious leader. Like, your faith is brought into question when you're questioning them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you can... They start diluting the waters there. Mm-hmm. So I do think that's why the abuse of power takes place in these yeah. communities. I mean, it's just it's just crazy because it just seems to me like whenever there's a power dynamic, mm-hmm. there's always abuse, abuse of, of that it, yeah. power. Yeah. And it just like human beings basically should not have power yeah. over anything, especially not over anyone because yeah. we can't handle power. I mean, that's where the whole phrase with great power comes great responsibility because it's not easy to have power. Mm-hmm. It's the balance of power is something that's always like on your mind and should always be on your mind and how not to abuse it. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, humans are humans and a lot of times, even if they're in a like in a position like a pastor, where yeah. they got there through a lot of great means and being a great person, mm-hmm. once you're on that position for long enough, yeah. you start you go one of two ways a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of times, it is finding a way to impose your power on those beneath you, if you will, again yeah. with quotes. Um, and a lot of times, it is through sexual means. Yeah. Why, why do you think it's, like, through sexual means? Is that just, like, the most basic human form of, like, I kind of, yeah. I'm kind of thinking that's why. Because I think, yeah. um, I think of, like, a lot of wars, mm-hmm. right? When there's, like, a, even though it's wars, like, terrorists and stuff, yeah. they want to come take over yeah. a place. I was listening to an interview recently yeah. talking about, like, the Chibok girls and yeah. how they feel missing. And, like, yeah. the sexual, like, domination yeah. is kind of, like, one way to break mm-hmm. someone's spirit of, mm-hmm. like, we're going to come take over your village and we're going to rape all the women. And it's like, wait, 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 like just take over the village. Why do you have to rape all the women on top of that? It seems like it's a, like, it's a, just the most basic way to break. To break a human. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, if you have power, isn't enough. Yeah. So it's like, if you have power as a religious figure, why would you break someone's spirit? Why would that like, why would that be something that you're doing? That seems like the opposite of your job. Like you shouldn't ever. I mean, you know that, um, to go back to what I was just saying, you know, that dark night quote, like, you're a hero long enough to become the villain or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you're a lot of times I would think that a lot of these religious speakers are seen in such a pristine light for long enough that they even start <sighs> delusionizing themselves. themselves and seeing themselves in that fashion. That no matter what I do, even if I am, it's the will of God. It is the will. It's it, God one. Even if I'm having those urges, it's because, it's you know because what I'm saying? God. And, God directed and, me. and because they <laughs> have that power and the, they can then quiet the people that they're abusing yeah. and have quiet themselves and just put up that facade and that best foot forward yeah, yeah, and they yeah. just that's just what they do at night that's just what they do behind closed doors that's not who they really are i, I feel like they can find them their way of compartmentalizing mm-hmm. it because for so long they've been seen as this good person and for so long they've been on Mayor, that do we know what happened right. to the koza guy nothing happened right so he was told by his senior pastor or whatever mm-hmm. he should stay from pulpit so basically mm-hmm. not but he's still working there. He he's still offered counseling. Okay. I think he started this week. Yeah. Yeah. But he can do everything else. He still has his job. Yeah. He can still counsel yeah. behind and, the scenes. And now it's over, basically. He's gone back on the public. Uh, so how about know, police stuff? They tried to force the couple to come to Abuja to... Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you said that. To have their case heard or whatever. Yeah, they you, know, that you mentioned that. Have their people and mm-hmm. they just killed the case. Huh. You know what's interesting about this situation, though? Is at the time that she um, sought that or had the sexual abuse occur, was he, like, around her age or was he already? I don't know for sure. I think he was older, though. The way she described it was And was he was already that, a pastor? Or, yeah, like, yeah okay. he was a pastor. Oh, he was, he was a pastor. Young, pastor. Yeah, he yeah, was okay, young. Okay, okay. He, he, he just had a wife. And, like, oh, so he was married at the yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He was really young. So he still had the same power dynamic. Mm-hmm. Maybe it wasn't as strong as it is now. Yeah, yeah. But it was. It still existed where he was like the preacher, and they believed and followed him type thing. Yeah. And, yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. And I just read a bunch of articles on like. Um, I read. I read an article. There's this track coach who did the same thing, but with men, like in the U.S. Yeah. Actually, he did it like in the U.S. and in the U.K. And, like, he abused a bunch of men. I mean, and like, same with the gymnastics guy. Yeah. Gym- Yo, it's, like, literally it everywhere happens in you turn. Any, because, again, that's I think it has the dynamic with yeah. the coach and people. Or, in the case of the gymnast, it's a doctor and, like, these young gymnasts. Mm-hmm. Like, any chance, like, it seems like any chance a, 
adult male has to yeah. impose any sort of power on someone, they find a way to abuse it. Yeah. Like in most dynamics. I'm mm-hmm. not saying every male that's a coach or every male that's a doctor or every male that's a pastor or whatever, but I'm saying in any dynamic in similar of similar fashion, mm-hmm. there's it's always just, just the instances. Ground. Yeah, there's always instances of this. It's almost like the condition on which it's going to happen is there has to be a, a power dynamic that, first. Right. Before there could be anything. Right. So if we're like on the same level power based on power, yeah. I can't really abuse you like mm-hmm. that. Right? Because mm-hmm. even in the small instances with like women and occurring from a, whim- a woman to a man, a mm-hmm. lot of times, again, it's because they're in a more powerful position. Maybe they Definitely. are their boss. Like in the case of um, not even our boss, like a, even with age. Like I remember with the case of like the Me Too movement, sometimes there are the outliers. And there was this woman, she's a French actress. I think she dated Anthony Bourdain or was the, I don't remember. I, ho- I hope I, I don't remember her name or anything okay. like that. But either way, she was really outspoken about the Me Too movement. And then it was found out that she apparently was in a sexually, I don't know what you want to call it, in the sexual misconduct situation with a okay. co-star, but he was a younger male. Okay, so again, okay, okay. her abuse of power is because of age and the fact that she's older and she was able to, mm-hmm. like, and it was another actor. So maybe he wanted to be his best self, if you will, with somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. who has power in the industry of some mm-hmm. fashion. So any in cases of woman, a, um, a woman doing it to a male, it's usually in a case where she has more power. And that's very limited circumstances, but it occurs in that yeah. um, dynamic as well. Yeah, no, I agree. I, th- I think the last thing I want to ask you, kind of going, so we kind of went into like the sexual levels and how that kind of affects that relationship. Mm-hmm. Do you think that there's power dynamics within like just normal healthy relationships or maybe i shouldn't say normal healthy relationships but like a willing or a consensual relationship between like a man and a woman like are there power dynamics and how does that play into that do you know what i mean yeah Uh, like is there like is there a power dynamic one and then is like is there a way that it should go like how do you manage that power dynamic right because we're talking about the power dynamic as too off kilter that's when it can be abused yeah so it would seem like okay ideally there should be no power dynamics but there's power dynamics between people you're right i think my man's avery upstairs is distracting me too yeah yeah he's you turning might open up. the door for, for us very um but no i mean i i agree i feel like within like just natural relationships too like mm-hmm. there is a power dynamic but I guess was your que- was your question whether there is an abuse of that as well? Yeah, sometimes? like do you think that like what makes that? So I, we know there's power dynamics. How does that end up becoming like? How does it move to a point where it's abused? I feel like it just ends up being like depending on the individual. So if there's mm-hmm. a man that sees an opportunity to abuse the power, they do because I feel like there are there's like there's power in both like. I mean, for both individuals in the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. But then, and I don't want to, maybe I shouldn't keep it to just men or males, but then someone sees the opportunity to abuse that power and then they do if they find it necessary or even if they don't. So like in the case of just a normal relationship, maybe the woman cooks all the time. So her power is in feeding the man. Mm -hmm. And then the man, his power is, he's the one who goes to work predominantly. Maybe yeah. she's a stay-at-home mom. So financially, there's power in that. So both of them could abuse those powers when they see fit. Maybe they're mm, angry, I and the mom is like, I ain't cooking for you. You go find your food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he's mad, and he's like, oh, you know what? I'm changing all the passwords to all the bank accounts. You know right. what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, yeah. I think there's opportunities to abuse power. It's the it's the individual that does it, though. It's not. I feel like with any relationship, there's... There's the opportunity to do it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the individual can choose to or not choose to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? No, no, I think I think I agree with that. I think that there's definitely, like, there's always power dynamics. It always plays a role in how the relationship is. And like we kind of talked about earlier, like, a normal, healthy relationship is one in which you're both, you both have some degree of power, but you're both willing to yeah. cede it to the other person yeah. when the equation calls for yeah. it. And yeah, again, I'm speaking in a dynamic where there's, Equality in terms of power because there is those cases where like yeah maybe the woman predominantly cooks but then he's also physically abusive so that little ounce of power that she may have is mm-hmm. stripped away because if she doesn't cook he's going to physically impose yeah, yeah exactly and there's a so, there's a level of like 
there's a there's a dynamic which I think we're, we're probably not. Um, I don't want to say equipped. smart. Yeah, yeah, we're not equipped enough to talk about. Yeah. But I kind of feel like a lot of the situations that I see anyway in movies and media and news is a lot of times people that are abused abusers are people that feel powerless or like right. they're, they're basically trying to make up for a loss of power. Like right. they have like there's a gap in their power right. and they need to make up for it right. by then abusing or dominating with the little power they do have. Right, so kind of like That's the scenario true. we talked about, like the person that is physically abusive. Yeah. Like, I don't know this 100%. I'm not yeah. a doctor. <laughs> but I would bet money that there's something about them that they feel like they're lacking. And then yeah. they're making up for it yeah. by them being like, I agree. well, I can beat you though. I agree. I think, yeah, if, if I was to speculate a little bit further, I think it is based on insecurity. Like, yeah. there's insecurity somewhere. Maybe he doesn't feel like he's... I don't know, financially yeah. and, um, affluent enough mm-hmm. or he's not smart enough or whatever the case might be. He might feel like his wife or his partner exasperates some of his insecurities and the only way he can kind of like handle it yeah. is through physical abuse. Yeah. Um, so I definitely agree with that. It's usually because there's lack of something, you're then finding a way to abuse that power. Yes. Oh, and I think that could go with even with like the religious... Um, people mm-hmm. that we're talking about it's like they're held at such a high esteem and maybe they look within themselves and they don't see yeah. what others they don't might measure see. up to they what don't they, measure they up and then they act out in whatever ways they can so yeah, yeah i think it can definitely trickle down to various forms of yeah, yeah. definitely That's i think true. that was a that was a good conversation though i think so too and i think yeah. there's definitely more to be had when it comes to this conversation but yeah. we can save that for another day yeah. um so yeah i mean Let's do some shout outs. Yeah, yeah. I like our episode today because I feel like everything bleeds into the next. Even our first shout out kind mm-hmm. of works with our main topic. Oh, no. Who's our first shout out? Um, Sudan. Yeah, Sudan. Yay. Woo, 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 woo. Um, so we covered this topic extensively last season. Yes, um, Mawada was on. Helped Mawada us. Was told on. us what was going on. Exactly, exactly. And um, all the abuses of power there. Yes. Um, so, I mean, it looks like finally there seems to be a silver lining to mm-hmm. all of this mm-hmm. that's been going on for the past few months. Apparently, we um, have hit a point where a democratic um, process is about to be implemented, yes. I believe. I don't yes. know the full gist of it. I actually think we should do some research and maybe start off next week. Um, That's a good idea. Talking to everybody about it, yeah. yeah just giving a full update on mm-hmm. what's really happening. Yeah, I think so. But shout out to what we know for now. I mean, yeah, shout out to the shifting of power. Yeah. Essentially, right? Power yeah. is moving however slowly, whatever step it is in the process, it is moving from a limited group of people to the people. To the people. So yeah. that's what we want, right? Yeah. So yeah, shout out to them. Um who else are we shouting out? Oh, shout out to Davy Doe. Random shout out. Right. But I don't Do, think that's a random, but well, sure. from everything we just talked about. Uh, right, okay. There's you're no right. like easy like, <laughs> you're right. hard David. turn to yeah. something Sudan, more David exciting. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, shout out to him. He became the first Nigerian artist with five hundred million YouTube streams views. on YouTube, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he's doing really well, and it's kind of crazy. His biggest then I think is Fall because mm-hmm. we talked about that before. Yeah. How that's like in the U.S. and everywhere yeah. now. Uh, as of like Friday or something, it was like 138 million wow. views. So yeah, he's uh he's getting money. That's amazing. And he you know, has a song with Chris Brown. A lot of people just like think it. about like where he was as a college student way back when when mm-hmm. he was like you know, about to basically leave it all behind to mm-hmm. pursue music full time. Mm-hmm. Who would have ever spider. thunk, right? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, amazing. so yeah, shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, I have one more shout out. So let me see who okay. my shout outs. Hmm. Oh, shout out to Dave. You know Dave? No. You don't know Dave? Who's Dave? Dave's like a UK rapper. He's like Nigerian British. No. He has a song. If you send me a little kid. Oh yeah, I do know Dave. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. I know his song. Yeah. I didn't know his name was Dave. I think he has he has a song with Drake too. Okay. Right? He has a song. Well, you you know if you hear it. Drake jumped on his song. But yeah, his first album, his debut album is nominated for like a British award. Hey. It's called the Mercury something. Good for him. UK Mercury Prize. Okay. That's what it's called. So Good for him. shout out to him, you know. We always find our Nigerians anywhere in the world. And <sighs> Come we, we on. Congratulate. As always. We don't hit. <laughs> all right? Anything uh, happening this week? Um, No. No, all right. Yeah. Same here. Nothing, nothing is happening. Can, nothing I want to talk about. Okay. Nothing to bring up. All right. Secrets. All right. <laughs> Have a good week, guys. You Thanks too. for listening. Bye.